thanks for coming today. Um, today is Thursday, July 30th, and you are with Tony Tesler, that's me. And I'm gonna show you a few things today. Um, green, so if I notice myself freezing, I'm just gonna have to go back and refresh it somehow, but it all looks good for now, so okay. So again, thanks for being here. Um, today's Thursday, almost the end of the month. Uh, just a reminder, you know, say hi, you already did. If you're on replay, do um, hashtag replay. Um, the hostess code, this is closing tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day of the month. And um, since I'm working late, I'm probably not gonna do that till probably nine o'clock-ish or so, 9 p.m. Um, but just keep that in mind. I'll have a new one with a new workshop the new code I'll put out on my blog on Saturday, since that's August 1st. Um, but next week will be on Thursday. That's when I'll do the August workshop. And um, the the goodie that I'm doing next month is going to be these uh, Artistry Blooms Adhesive Back Sequins. I haven't opened them yet because um, ugh, I just don't want to yet. I'm going to open them this weekend. But I just I already like that they don't have holes in them and that they're adhesive. And I think they're pretty. So we'll do that. So without further ado, hey Peg, um, let's do our first project. So I titled today's session Leaves of All Kind because I wanted to show you different kinds of leaves. And um, I mean, nothing special about them, but oh wait, yeah, here's a swap. So I got this swap from one of my friends named Anita. She used some cute new Halloween stuff. We've got a new embossing folder coming. And um, this is the raised bit. So I can, I think she just like um, wiped the ink pad over it so it would catch all the raised bits. And then we've got this new iridescent pearl. It's um, black, but it looks, you know, it kind of looks like bug eyes, like how they're greenish black. And I can tell from feeling it, it is smooth. So that'll be, um, that'll be fun to play with. So that's a cute little, cute little swap. I like the colors. I like green, I mean purple and orange together. So, neat. Okay, now on to the card. So this I cased from, I looked up Pinterest and the girl that did it was um, Stamping Gala. And then I noticed, I seem to like a lot of her stuff. Um, I did change something though, because her background was white. And I really like the the tone on tone look. I like more color. And um, then I gave the leaves, I mean the flowers, a little shimmer. I don't know if that's gonna show. So let's get to it though. So I'm using the band together stamps and dies. Let me see this. And I just got this a few months ago. It was a bundle, it came out last year, but I just got it a few months ago. So I'm gonna be playing with this more. Let me see, here's all my pieces. Now here's all the dies that, it's called band together because these things make bands, like belly bands or you know little bands that you put across it. So I've already cut them, the piece that I'm gonna use. I really like that. This thing, look how big that is. That's. That's kind of intimidating, but I'm gonna use that eventually. Some, a little leaf and some sprig stuff. These are the ones, pieces I'm gonna to use today. All right, let me put these out of the way. So I already went ahead and stamped these because I wanted them to dry a little bit. And I'm using um, Seaside Spray today, just so you know. I'm gonna be working with the blends markers, the Stampin' Blends. When you use the alcohol markers, you want a thick cardstock. So anything like 100, 110 pound, something like that. You can use the lighter, like the regular weight Whisper White, but it tends to bleed. And definitely um, they're not good on anything fibery. Like if you still have some of that old Naturals cardstock from a bunch of years ago, uh, it's just the nature of it. The alcohol markers will just bleed right through that, like spread out bleed. You know, it always bleeds through the backside some. That's just the nature of the beast. So, anywho, uh, let's get to coloring. So with the leaves, let me start with those first. 
So this is just your typical leaf. When you color these, now, disclaimer, I'm not the best at coloring with the alcohol markers, but I try and I do like it. Um, but there's plenty of people out there that know a lot more than me about it. The thing everyone says is you want to put your darker shading in the shadows. I personally, I don't have a good eye for that, um, for seeing shadows. So I just kind of go like down the sides some, and then like over here, like wherever I think I just want some color difference here. And notice I'm not doing all these the same. That's okay. So I start with the darker first. Now I have three shades of the old olive because these were uh, the original ones that we had from a couple years ago. Um, mine are still good, so I'm gonna keep using them until they dry up. So then I go in with the medium and I just run it kind of over top and right next to the dark bits that I just did. And it goes pretty quick. Um, you know, right now it doesn't look that great. I can see like a lot of lines, but that's gonna clear up. Then I take the light and I just color over the entire thing. And that's when you really start to see the, the blending, the colors blending some. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I've noticed when I color things, like I'll do some coloring and then I'll leave it and it's got like streaks and lines. And then I come back the next day and it seems like it's blended together. So I don't know if this like the alcohol keeps moving like after you let it sit for a little bit. I don't know, but it's interesting. Okay, almost. So see, this is pretty quick, but this leaf is pretty simple. There are, you know, a lot more detailed leaves that you could get into. Okay. So I can't tell if my comments have froze. My video is definitely not frozen, so that's good. All right, we will stick with it. All right, so pretty easy and quick. So I wanted three leaves, and then I'm gonna cut out this one and use that as well. Put these, I need a pile for this. There we go. I'm gonna put these away for a minute, get to the flower. So I already cut one flower. So you can see I've got the two that are the same and this one. <coughs> now I already did the yellows Again, you want to start with the darker and, you know, they say put the darker bits in like where you would see the shadows. And like I said, I'm just not very good with that. So I put it like down here and I put it in here and then I went over it with the light. And I mean, can you see the difference? It looks, it looks like there's some difference. So that's all I'm really going for. Okay, let me do... And I only wanted to color one of these flowers just because it is a little time consuming. So I'm gonna go like around the, near the bottom and anything where there's a line, I'll do that line. Like here, get in this corner, down here. Now my friend Gail is a lot better with the uh, shading and using these alcohol markers and she's got some other ones that she uses she really gets a, a good look with it anything she makes she gets perfect shading she's my hero with that all right and this little bit so you see i'm not really getting too worked up on you know, detail. I think it looks good enough. I mean, maybe I should be more concerned. I don't know. All right, now I'll just go back and I try to start where I started before and then I just color all over it. Now, sometimes when I'm doing this part, I will use the fatter end just because it will go quicker because this covers a lot more. 
and I don't know if that's any, uh, if you're supposed to use one end or the other, but there's two of them, two ends, so why not? That goes a lot faster, and it's very smooth. there. See this is why I didn't want to make you suffer through coloring three leaves because this part I think is long and boring like one flower you get the idea. Now I will tell you um, I have to hand cut this because the dye I only have the dye for this flower but that was easy enough. Getting around to the end. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Now before I hand cut, where did my scissors go? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna cut this, whack this off. So I am gonna run this through my little dye machine, and then I'll do the leaves at the same time too. I'm just chopping off these extra little bits. So for those of you that have gotten the holiday catalog, which is now called the August through December catalog, I don't know why we have to do that, but everybody still calls it the holiday catalog. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for being here. All right, so holiday catalog, you may have noticed that the small, there's the tiny, the mini, um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's in the catalog, but you can't order it. It's not available. I don't know what's going on. Um, if it's shipping things or manufacturing, I really have no idea. Um, but I have this little, my sidekick that I use anyway, so it doesn't really bother me that it's not available. So we just have to be patient. Um, so little one, where did that die go? If I had my bigger one, ugh, you could get a flower. Actually, I can get a flower and a dye, a leaf on both this whole sheet. And that's what I have my post-it notes for. Because sometimes, since this isn't magnetic or anything, I gotta put something here so it will stay in place. So post-its come in handy if you have um, painter's tape. Actually, I gotta do this in front of me painter's tape or um, some of the 3M tape. Like I have tape that is like post-it notes. It's made out of the same stuff. And my green ones disappeared. All right, let me get this flower in here. So yeah, like I said, um, the embossing machine, the big one, so they've got two in the big catalog. They've got a regular size embossing machine, which I mean, everybody I know and their brother already has a big shot, um, but if you don't have one, the big one should be available soon. This little one, probably not till December. All right, I'm gonna hold this. This might shake the camera a little bit, so sorry about that. Okay. I love it. All right, garbage. Now, since I only have one leaf die, I gotta do this, you know, cut two more times. Let me see. Leaf, flower, leaf. I probably should have done cut two of these ahead and just made you sit through cutting one. My apologies. But it doesn't take too long, right? Now, if you didn't get the dyes with this, um, the flowers and the leaves, they're simple enough you could hand cut them. I think the uh, the sell for me on the dyes was those bands, those that are fancy. Because you can use those for a lot more different stuff. So there's that. Put my leaf back so I don't lose that. Get rid of this. Mm. 
So yeah, that little Tim Holtz one sidekick, that's um, that's just good for a little tabletop stamping. All right, so I've got my two flowers, three leaves that are sticking to my paper. Now I'm gonna hand cut this flower and the leaf, but that is going to be very straightforward. Zoop. Now I like this um, seaside spray. I wanted to do this, um, I will probably do another one, like in a pink maybe, because I think that would be pretty. And I don't really know what kind of flower this is, uh, but I don't really think that matters. It's pretty. That's all we need to know, right? All right, and I'm just going around here pretty quickly, not... I like to leave a little bit of white space around whatever I'm cutting. Cutting through this thick cardstock makes it a little more interesting, but still doable. All right, I'm almost done. Hi, Cecilia. Susie, hey, how are you doing? Okay, got everything cut. So I've got my two flowers, my other flower. Boop, three leaves and a long leaf. Now I'm gonna go, I've got my Seaside Spray card base. And let me just bring this in to show you girls that got here what we're making. Um, so this one I use the tin tile embossing folder. Let me bring that up a little bit. And then for my one that I'm going to make right now, uh, I just use the Parisian Flourish. And just because I like both of these and I wanted us to see the difference. They're both pretty. So I'm going to use the liquid glue to put this embossed background bit on. I just have to hold that on there for a second and hope it doesn't goop out and get all over my fingers because that seems to happen. Thanks, Kathy. It is it is pretty. Like I said, this wasn't my original idea. Um, Stamping Gala was the, uh, I found it on Pinterest, but I did change up some of the papers that she used. Like she had a white background instead of the colored. And I just, I like the tone on tone look with an embossed layer. That's my favorite. All right, so now once we've got our base, it's just building the flowers. And I started with this one because this one is flat. I don't know if you can see that. This one is laid down flat or glued. And then these two are raised up with dimensionals. And then the leaves are tucked in and they're all flat too. And what I have to do is, so I pre-cut this die piece from the um, detailed bands dies, this one. So it comes like, it has these tabs on the edge and I don't want that hanging over. So I'm just gonna cut these off and I'm just trying to like give it a little curve to follow that design. Obviously it's not perfect, but no one is ever gonna notice or for that matter no one would say anything even if it was jacked up okay so this is kind of going to be on the middle so just for placement um actually i'm just going to use glue on this i'm going to start with this one like eh, i want it to be like here and then i want these let me put the dimensionals on those Once I get this all together, then at the end, I will go over it with uh, Wink Estella so it's nice and shimmery. Okay. But you could do this with any, any flower that you could cut out or die cut. And these leaves, um, like I said, pretty simple. All right, so I've got this, that'll be like, eh here 
and then we'll get some leaves and just like I said I'm tucking those in and hopefully um, you know how sometimes you run into where you put the dimensional hopefully that won't be a problem yeah that's good good enough and then let's take another one here and I'm just putting a little bit of glue so this is gonna go here I want this like a little bit over top like that so let me just hold that in place for a second okay now I'm not worried too much over here because I'm gonna do another little bit of stamping I've got to stamp this word piece and die cut that and um, that's like where the stem came that's gonna get covered up all right let's put this guy Mm, like about here and then I want this long leaf that I cut out this is the end that was towards the bottom that was not very pretty or perfect so but either way we're gonna just stick that here hi Lenore hey Gail I was telling them earlier that Gail is much better with these alcohol markers um, you get a lot of good shading and you know what you're doing. So, all right, let's put that there. Now this kind of looks like crap right now, but don't forget it's going to get covered up. So let me sit, let this glue dry and we're going to stamp the, the greeting and I'm going to go with you are amazing because I left that on my block. Now I like this, um, my Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. It's a nice dark black, it's pretty crisp. I did get the Versa Fine Onyx um, after Gail turned me on to it, and uh, I like that too, but this seems to be my, what I grabbed first. All right, so you are amazing, yeah. And I think I'm done with the black, so I'll put that away. Do do do. I forgot I gotta get my little thing out again. Thank you, Peg. It is pretty. I am gonna have to try it with some different colors for sure. I think a pink and possibly a purple. All right, so this die, this oval die, this came in the detail band set as well. So you get that. And I'm just going to yeah, that should stay pretty good. Put these on, run this through. Yo, you don't have the um, the Catherine Pooler? It's a very, it's a foamy pad. It's very, it's very smushy, but I like it. Um, I think it dries a little faster. Well, a lot faster than the Versafine. Um, but for words, that Versafine, the Onyx that you turned me on to, that is, I like that for the words. It's very crisp but for general purpose I like the midnight the Catherine Pooler and I've got a couple other black ones black ink pads that I just keep trying new ones I don't know why okay so we've got this now when I go to attach this piece to the little detailed thing I used mini glue dots because it's barely let me show you the back barely going to touch some pieces on these four spots. So I'm just going to run a, a mini glue dot like right, right at the edge and right at the edge here and then in the middle and again on the end. Oop, that, that one did not want to come off. All right. Foul. Okay, now I'm just gonna put this right down and close enough. So see, it caught just enough of the glue dots to stay, to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna reinforce that with, I'm gonna go back and add the dimensionals and any place where that blue detailed die is I can see it. I'm going to put 
put a dimensional on it. And that will also keep, help keep it in place. And then just for good measure, one more. Okay. You've been putting glue dots on wrong your whole life? What do you mean? It's easier if you just like take it to the, you know, take your paper to the glue dot. Um, but if you've got some, like, let me find some. Uh, you know how we get some in the paper pumpkin kits and they come like on a sheet like this? These ones, I definitely, I would pick them up with a, a thing and then put them on your paper. But for this kind, I find it's always easier just to put your paper right to it. So, neat. All right, this has all our glue dots and I'm just putting this right in the middle-ish. Mmm, pretty, pretty, pretty. Now this bow. So when I made the bow, I had to use liquid glue and I had to put something heavy on it. I had to put a punch on it. I would normally use glue dots to attach my ribbon, but for some reason, this ribbon, uh, it just doesn't want to stay attached with um, with the glue dot. So where did I put that? So I'm going to tie it. I'm going to show you how I tie it, but then I'm just going to put it to the side. So to make this bow, I do a loop. Am I in camera? I do a loop. Give yourself plenty to work with. I wrap it around and then push this through. And then play with the, uh, pull the ends so you get the your ears and your tails the the same way. So, yeah, I think that's about good. And I don't worry that, you know, oh, you're wasting that much. Uh, it's not a big deal. When have we ever, like, run out of ribbon? Never. Don't worry about it. All right. So I'm going to throw that away. I could make a little knot or something and then attach it to another project. So... All right, maybe I won't throw this away a bit, a bit. I hate keeping all that stuff though because then I don't end up throwing it away. And then I have piles and piles. So I'm gonna attach this later, but I will go ahead and add my pearls. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. Like that. Now as you can see, I still have some of the old pearls. I'm still using up all my stuff. <clears throat> I mean, they're still good. God, my throat's froggy. I want one here and then two more. Oh, and then we're going to do Wink of Stella because I told you it was going to be shimmery. And it's going to be shimmery. And put it down here. So pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, let's shake this up. Now, I actually, can you see the shimmer in this? If I'm turning it, I actually put two coats of the Wink of Stella on. I just, I love this stuff. It's so easy. What color is the blue? The blue, this is Seaside Spray. And I colored the flowers in with the, um, the blends. And I used a uh, thick cardstock. So, cause whenever you're using the alcohol markers, you want something thicker. Now I didn't do the leaves, but I'm going to on this one. Why not? And I got to pick this up a little because I want to get this brush all the way down in there. I want shimmer all over. Mmm, nice. You know, it must be that one of my shimmer markers was getting old because this one is really juicy. Let me just slide this under. Very pretty. Okay. So that's that. So this was our first leaves. Yeah, you know, today's all about different kinds of leaves. So these were our simple leaves. And uh, I love it. Very pretty. All right. Next, actually, let me put this out of the way. Get my glue dots out of the way. Um, 
Oh, announcement while I'm cleaning this stamp. I do want to clean this as I go. That's one thing. With this Catherine Pooler ink, I wouldn't want to let this sit on there for indefinitely. It comes off of the uh, rubber stamps very easily, but if you use it on photopolymer, uh, it will stain it a lot. Now, some people, it doesn't bother you. Uh, it would It bothers me a little bit. Not a ton, but, um, uh, so let me have a sip of coffee and I remind you bonus days are going on through August 3rd. So that's when every 50 you spend, you're going to get a $5 coupon to spend in August from August 4th to the 31st. And coincidentally, the holiday catalog goes live on August 4th. So keep that in mind. Hmm. Let me fold up my notes here because I will forget stuff without them. Okay. Next leaf is a more of a traditional leaf. Ugh. So this one's going to be a slim line. So you may remember last week I was using um, the loyal leaves this big leaf and I made the poinsettia and I was saying, Ooh, I wonder how this would pair together with the smaller leaves from rooted in nature. Well, it looks great. That's what I did. Oh, happy birthday early Lenore. That's awesome. 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 All right, let me get this. So from rooted in nature, let me get these all out of the way. These two are from rooted in nature. This one is from Loyal Leaves. So similar styles of leaf, um, but just different sizes. So I thought this was perfect for a fallish card. And the thing with slim lines that I love is you get so much real estate. There's so much area to work with and decorate and you can use these bigger images and just fill it up. Love it. So let's get to it. So the colors I used for this are Bumblebee, Mary Merlot, and Cinnamon Cider. I thought those looked really good together. So I'm going to put this up here so I can look at it and get this stuff out of the way. So my card base, this is actually eight and a half by seven, and then I scored it in half so it is eight and a half by three and a half. And I know um, some of the other ones are like eight and three quarters. That's generally what I've been doing. But I like this eight and a half because it's just the width of a piece of cardstock. So that's where I was going with that. Um, it was just easy measurements. And then the cinnamon cider, I think I cut this one down um, a quarter of an inch. Yep, I like those together. And then we're gonna do the stamping on very vanilla. And I'm pretty sure I took this down um, an eighth or so. I'll have to measure this. And I always put my measurements when I uh, upload these to YouTube. And I usually have it done within two days. So by Saturday, I'll have it on YouTube. And like in the description under the video, you know, there's like words, words, words. And then at the bottom of the description, I've got, you know, project number one, cardstock. And that's where I put the measurements. So that's so you know where that is. Okay, so I'm going to start with the biggest flower first. I mean leaf. Leaf, flower, whatever. And I'm doing that in the Mary Merlot. And I start with the biggest one first just because of um, if it's going to take up all the space, it's easier to add in the smaller ones. Ooh, yeah, I love this. And I'm just random adding these in. And then one across here. Ooh, yeah. Leaves are my ultimate favorite, autumn leaves. So this really does it for me. All right, then I'm gonna come in with the medium one. And I am so happy that these coordinate, like that these are similar leaves and that they like go together. You don't know how much I love that. All right, so cinnamon cider. And I was just going over top of 
all of these. I'm not worrying that if it's overlapping, I want them to overlap. And I'm gonna come in with the, um, the smaller one. Uh, let's see, I feel like that needs one there. Oh, I need to stamp an extra one because I'm gonna cut some out. So I'm gonna stamp this guy right there. And then I'm gonna, I think I'm done with this. No, actually I need that for the words. But I'm gonna come back in with the smallest one now, the smallest leaf. So one, and I'm gonna have to hand cut these, but you know, not the end of the world. They're very easy to cut. All right, now this, I'm really just filling in, going over, and then I'm gonna add some little dots. But I don't know about you, I just, I love, first of all, I'm ready for the temperatures for fall. I feel like I need a little, I need another one of those cinnamon ones there. Like that, I left that spot too, too bald. Okay, good, good, good. But I am ready for the fall temperatures. This, this hot is, I'm over it. I've got my own hots going on, you know what I mean? So, I don't like to sweat. All right, now I've got some little dots. These are like little bubbles or something from the um, Whale Done set. I think it's supposed to be fish, like little air bubbles. But it's a good enough, it's just a good little sprinkle. Mm, sorry, need another bit of coffee. Yeah, yeah, Lenore, I love it. And you can make, you know, any change of colors around for any leaves that you like. <coughs> like you could throw some greens in here or orange. Fall, there's so many colors for fall that work. Yeah, no girl, it's not designer paper. There was similar designer paper, um, was that just last year, I think? Yeah, it was like petal pink and I can't remember what other color, but you're right, I just thought about that. It was very similar. But yeah, you can totally make your own prints. Uh, and I think I'm gonna cover up over here, so I think I'm done with that. Now, actually, before I do assembly, um, so I pre-cut, this is from the Stitch So Sweetly dies, and this is what I'm gonna stamp the words on, and I'm gonna do that in the cinnamon cider. And I hope that this is, yeah, it's not purple, but yeah, purple would be a good, um, a good fall color, but this is the Mary Merlot that I'm using. I guess that is kind of purpley. All right, uh, hoping I have this straight enough. We'll see. Oh, you're funny. Yeah, I don't use my Stamparatus or the Misty like as often as maybe I should. I am, I'm usually more of um, like winging it and it, it's good enough. Like I don't worry about it. Some things I do, but for the most part. Okay, so this I'm going to put dimensionals. Did I dimensional it? No, I taped this. Okay. So let's tape this. And, yep, straight. And then we'll tape this. Oh, and then I'm going to show you guys something that I made. So last week when I was saying, oh, I bet, you know, I wonder how these would go with a, a poinsettia with the other two leaves from the Rooted in Nature. Well, I made one and I love it. All right. Now, before I attach this to the base, see how it's coming together? I've got to cut out my, these two leaves. Oh, with my scissors that were, that just disappeared on me. All right, so put this away. So yeah, these leaves are really quick to cut out. 
Although this one, from the Root of Nature, there are dyes for these leaves. Um, I just remember that. But for me, it didn't even occur to me to get them out for this because this is such a, a quick cut. Now I did put, uh, let me see, it looks like I put dimensionals under this leaf and like right there. Now I use every little bit of my dimensionals. So there we go, Loop. Now I want a little bit of cinnamon ribbon here. Let me bring this other one back in. So see, you can see it, um, it's not really, it's covered up here, but you can see it on the ends. And I just ran it all the way over and then I stapled it. Um, I do like to use a staple for ribbon if I can. Normally I can hide it, so I don't worry about seeing it, but if you do see it on the ends, it does not bother me at all. So let me see, I'm gonna, let's cut that there. And this is all I did was I held it in place now this is a little um, mini stapler that Stampin' Up! we don't sell anymore, but plenty of people. Ugh, that just figures. Not to fear, I have staples. Which by the way, Gail, I did look into finding these little staples and I can't find anything this size. So when I run out of these, uh, I'm just gonna have to get a different one. I mean, somebody else has little staples right? I think Tim Holtz or somebody. All right, so let's see. We got to squeeze this a little, put it all the way around. And then I think I can get two of these in here. Nope, that's a lie. Only one. All right. Gentle, gentle. And then this goes all the way around and we're back in business. All right, slight derailing with the stapler, but here we go, we're back. Um, and this is gonna go that way, that's okay. All right, I like it. Now I'm just gonna use glue on here because especially with those staples, if I just used regular tape, it would not hold very well. Yeah, Gail, I did, um, I did a lot of research looking for that because I was like, I'm going to find those for her and couldn't find anything that is the same size. So, which is disappointing. Um, why would they do that to us? But there's other options. We'll just have to find something, a different little stapler. That's all we're going to have to do. All right, just going to hold this for a second. All right, good enough. And I want some more dimensionals under the greeting part. And then I think I'm gonna have to get a new pack out, which is good, fine. Okay. Let's do one there and another one. So once I get this on, I'm gonna show you what I worked on last week with all the leaves. Okay. Is that one more? Thanks, Dawn. Yeah, fall is my absolute favorite time of year and favorite card making stuff. So, all right, I'm gonna put this here. It may not be in the exact spot as the original, but that's okay. And then I layered my cutout leaves. So like, meh, kind of like that. And then I want that poking over a little bit. So there we go. Now, I finished this off with some champagne rhinestones. I like these. Um, they kind of look gold. They could go with gold or copper or brass. Um, they're, they're pretty all purpose. 
but they also go with like browns too and folly colors. So, sorry, I got the sweats now. I, to, I gotta wipe my glasses down or my face down. Whew. It's one of those days. All right, so let's do um, let's do a big one like oh that somehow that landed right on my hand. Big one there, and then we'll do two little ones. Let's do here and here. I like it. Dawn, these are the sizes I will definitely. I was saying earlier I will have them on my when I put this on YouTube. I put all the cardstock measurements, but just so you know, this size, um, this is eight and a half by three and a half. So I cut the paper eight and a half by seven and scored it in half. And I went with eight and a half just because that's the width of a piece of paper. A lot of times you'll see them, they'll be like eight and three quarters long or maybe nine. Um, so yeah, that's what this is. Eight and a half by three and a half. And then you cut down your pieces however you want, but I will also, um, I'll have all that. My cardstock measurements will be on my YouTube, which I'll have uploaded like in two days, at least by Saturday. Sometimes I get it the next day, but we'll see. So that is that. I love it. Now let me bring in last week. The card that I made with the, the big leaf was the poinsettia. And that's when I said, oh, I wonder how these will look together for to make a poinsettia. So I put all three sizes. So the three sizes of leaves that I did for the card now, I embossed them all on Mary Merlot with gold embossing powder. And this is, I just stamp, 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 you know, made a ring of them in Versamark and embossed it. And then I hand cut these out. So it's just three layers. And then I glued it on there. So, mm mm mm. I love how this turned out. It is humongous. I finally, I got some more gilded gems and I really, I do like those better. They're bigger. So on this one, remember, I had to use the gold enamel, I mean gold metallic dots, pearls. And I like it. I like it enough, but I like the bigger, chunkier look of the gilded gems. So, and this thing is humongous. I think it's like about eight inches wide. No, wait, seven, close enough, seven, eight, whatever it takes. So I'm gonna keep this around because um, what do you do with something this big? Hello, you make a big box and you put on top of it. So I'm gonna do that in a couple weeks. Yeah, I don't know if you can see. I could have popped this up more, but I feel like even with um, Stampin' Dimensionals, when you've got all that embossing, I don't feel like it would stay attached permanently, you know? So I like the liquid glue and I feel like it's still enough dimension. And I could like, yeah, crinkle these up so they make them, you know, so it makes them pop up. But in a couple weeks, I'm gonna do, um, I'll make a box for this and I'll show you guys. Cause I did a couple years ago, I made somebody, one of my friends, a um, scarf that I crocheted her. So I needed a box that was like, seven by seven by seven. So like seven and then tall. And this would go perfect. So the box would be like this big. So we'll do that. I'll put that. Yeah, I could frame it. That's true or an ornament. Yep. That is pretty big. There's a lot of things, but I already have it in my head that I'm going to make a box for this and put it on top. So we're definitely doing that. So I'm gonna have to just keep this somewhere safe. Cause like I said, I've got the next couple weeks already planned out, but maybe in September, I'll get back into that. So that's that. So that was leaves number two. Now, leaves number three. Um, oh wait, another bit of information. So August 4th, like I said, is the, the holiday catalog goes live. It's also when apparently we're getting a new website. Stampin' Up! is doing a new website and we have not been given a whole lot of detail about it other than um, it's supposed to be allow you guys, everyone to check inventory levels. So like when we go to put orders in and something's running low or it's already back ordered, we don't know that really 
until we go to put the order in. We have a list of things that are running low, um, but this will be live. So everybody, you guys and me can go in at any time and see like, oh, I'm interested in this. Is it on back order? And then you'll be able to see. I don't know exactly how it's gonna work um, because I haven't seen screenshots. Uh, I haven't seen anything. The other thing is it's gonna let you make wish lists like so you save things like you can favorite them or whatever like you know in other sites that you'll do that like save this for later and then you can just go and pick things off your list so it's supposed to let us do that too um we shall see but that's coming august 4th as well so uh, whoever you use for your demonstrator or if you are one just make sure you go and check your um your ordering site on the 4th and we'll see how it looks hmm. Oh, and it's supposed to be um, look better no matter what device you're on. Like, I don't know. I don't use my phone a whole lot for stuff anyway, so I don't know how things look different. But I do know, like, my blog looks different on my phone. Um, you know, certain things are web-based or they look better on web pages, bigger screens. Anywho, that's, that's that. All right. Next leaf is... It's more of um, seaweed, but I'm going to call it sea leaves. So this is what we're going to make next. This actually came right from the catalog. So that's so, and I did this just to remind everybody that the catalog is a good resource if you need ideas or you want to copy something. So let me, um, and I had it bookmarked. Let me see. So this is it in the catalog. And even though I have the list of um, supplies and ingredients posted on my stamping and sharing group, I didn't go to that to check. I just eyeballed this and thought, oh, that looks like jade. That looks like blackberry. That's definitely Calypso Coral. That's gold embossed. These colors, um, I may have gotten the blue wrong, but I got it. I like what I did, so. That's that. So whatever, you know, use your catalog as an idea book too. Okay. So let's start with, uh, this is the, now this pool, this ribbon is actually pool party, but it looks good with the jade. Like it looks like it matches. So don't even worry about that. All right, let me just move some stuff around. I was usually, uh, last week, I've been putting my dirties in this tray and then I'll go and clean them later. But I had my supplies in it. Okay. So we've got Blackberry Bliss, eight and a half by five and a half. Hold that in half. Schmutz. Then I've got an embossed. So this is just Jade that I already embossed with the seaweed, the new seaweed embossing folder. And I love all this the look of it. Hey Christine. So on the one I made first, I flipped it to the deboss side. So the all the design is pushed down and I ran a sponge over it to kind of pick up, you know, then it makes it stand out. So for this one, I'm going to do it with the raised side up just so we see the difference. So I've got a sponge and my just jade. Oh, let me take a quick yeah, I wish I wasn't. You're funny, Lenore. Well, I have to work. I'm on Eve shift now, so I got another two hours before I have to get going into work. But yeah, this morning, it's good. So these are the colors I'm using. Granny Apple Green, Just Jade, Pacific Point, Blackberry Bliss, and Clipso Coral. So I'm going to do the sponging Just Jade on the Just Jade cardstock. And I'm just rubbing it and it picks up that raised bit and just makes it stand out. Just like the swap that I showed you before, how she did that on the um, spider web embossing folder. Now we used to, with the um, ink blocks, like if you have the, the little ink cubes, you can do the direct paper. You can run that ink cube right over the paper directly but with the foam pads eh, it doesn't really work because they're squishy and it will get 
over the entire piece, not just the raised bits. So, mm. I like it. So see how it really just makes everything stand out some? Neat. All right, I'm not going to close this yet, but I'm gonna put that away. This pile. Now let's do the stamping on the white cardstock. Oh, I also took a little bit of vellum and embossed that with the same folder, seaweed or sea life embossing folder just to give it even a little bit more texture. All right, this is a piece we're stamping on and I will definitely put the measurements on there for you too. So I've got the biggish seaweed leaves and then I've got the smaller ones and I've got my seahorse and the coral. So I think I started with the coral. I'm not sure it really matters. So I want coral along the entire bottom. Okay. And I'm gonna leave that open because I'm using that for the seahorse. All right. Now for the, this is Pacific Point. We, that's normally darker. So we're gonna do some stamping off I'll show you that. So that's full strength. That's too dark. I don't want that. That's second generation. That's what I want. So for all of these, I'm going to stamp once and then I'm going to stamp again. And, and I'm kind of like going up and down some. I think that's it. I just had those two colors of the Pacific. Now I'm going to clean this off. And I'm gonna come back in with just jade. And this one I'm not stamping off any because I want that full strength color. And one more. Yeah, I like it. All right, so we're done with just jade. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Now I'm gonna come in with the little leaves and the grainy apple green. So I've got two shades of green and one of blue. Now these I'm just putting willy nilly. I don't care that that's kind of like in the air because who cares? I just want it as more color in here. So I want variety, more variety. Mm, I like it. Now I just need two little, need a little seahorse to hand cut. And I have gotten good at hand cutting these little guys. They're not as difficult as you would think. So that one in the Calypso. And then I need to clean them off and then I'm gonna do a couple in the Blackberry. digging this well done set um, and actually when I'm done after this card I finally got all my cards done for my class so I'm gonna have a well done class that I'm posting on Saturday um, that's gonna be eight cards and some products involved that you're gonna use so let me cut this out real quick Rick. And like I said not too worked up about the detail. Like I'm not gonna get inside his curly Q tail. Like what I did is, is good enough. The bigger seahorse in the Seaside Notion sets is much easier. But this wasn't too bad, look at that. That's only a minute. All right, now this I need a mini glue dot because he's so tiny. I mean, many dimensional. You know what I mean. All right. Oh, oop. 
lips that had to land like that. I'm gonna put them right here. All right. Now for the thanks, I don't know if you've noticed this. This is embossed in gold, and the stamp is actually thanks a ton. So that's what I need my scrap of paper. Let's see, I need my embossing body first. All right. And the Versamark pad. So all I'm gonna do is try to catch the edge of the Versamark pad on the words. So I just have to hold it like to the side so I can see it. And if I get some extra, I can just brush it off with a, with a paintbrush. All right, so let's give this a whirl. And I'm gonna hand cut this so I'm not worried about it being like straight or anything. And look at that, I ripped the paper. Yep, so see I've got some extra, that's okay. Let me just get the brush. All right, let me funnel this back in and then it's just gonna take me a minute to um, cook this. And then we will be ready for assembly. So bear with me. See, that was quick. Now, I do need to set this off um, for a little bit. And while I'm gonna do that, let me tape this on or glue it on. So I'm gonna glue my background, emboss background down first. All right, Boop. And I like the glue, cause yeah, then you got some wiggle room. That's right in place. Let me hold that for just a sec and have another slurp of coffee. Okay. Now the way this is gonna go, this vellum is here, and actually I'm gonna drag this down a little lower this time. So the vellum's here, and then our stamp layer is gonna be popped up with dimensionals. So for this, I'm just going to glue this, and I'm putting glue right under where our stamped bit is gonna cover it up. Okay. So see how you can see the, the glue here? I just gotta hold that for a sec. Not to worry, because this is gonna cover it up. Okay? So let me just hold this down. Do, do, do. How is the camera height? Can you guys see, okay? Can you see enough detail of what I'm doing? Let me know that. Because sometimes when I look over on the screen, I see a lot of all this around here, not so much down here. Um, so just let me know. All right, that's good enough. And let me go back and put some more, let's put dimensionals on here. Uh, so the vellum, it sometimes, it depends how tight your Big Shot is, it may crack. Um, it didn't for me. Um, and this is one of the 3D embossing folders, so they're like extra detail-y. So that'll just be hit or miss. Camera's fine, darling fine, okay, good. Just try it with the, uh, the vellum, Lenore. Every big shot is calibrated a little differently. Some are tighter than others. So, and I should mention that this is vellum cardstock, not the vellum paper. I don't really like to use the vellum paper much anymore. It's so thin and flimsy, um, but I still have some. So I'm gonna just put this right here. Okay. Let me bring this one back in. So you may notice I've got a double bow of the ribbon. So I'm going to show you where I put that. 
And again, I'm gonna make the bow, but I had to glue it on and set something on it, like a big punch, so it could hold it in place. So I'm not gonna do all that, but I will make it. So I'm taking about that much ribbon to make this bow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. So I start on this end, the end that's still stuck together. And it is kind of like herding cats, trying to keep this nice and flat. All right, so again, I start with my loop. And then I, ugh, this is where it's gonna start getting hanky. Whip it around. And then these two go through here. And then I gotta pull and, and there, I do have a ribbon um, like machine. It's some wood with wood sticks, dowels in there. That's a stand up thing. I use that too, but sometimes I just like to do it by hand just cause instead of dragging everything out. All right, so I like that pretty good. Eh, a little bit, yep. And then I would trim these, and like I said, I would glue this on here, but I'm not gonna make you suffer through that. But we are going to hand cut this thanks. So yeah, once you emboss something, you just need to let it sit for a minute or so because that embossing powder is still hot and melty and it will stick to your fingers and burn you and then it will wreck your what you've done. And who wants to do that? All right, and then I need mini dimensionals for this. And you may think these look strange. These are from a paper pumpkin as well. They seem to give us so many that um, I'm always using the extras on stuff. So that's good. All right, one more. No saggy bits. All right, let's put this on and I'll just put that on here. And that is that. Just imagine that this ribbon is here. Or actually I could just leave it off, you know? I like it both ways. So that's the cards I'm making. And then before I let you go, I just wanted to give you a sneak peek. Like I said, I've been working on a, um, a well done class. So it's gonna use the stamp set and the punch. Um, but the class includes, and I'm posting this on Saturday. So you're going to get a, the whale done, the pack of paper. Um, you're going to get the, a bolt of this ribbon. This is part of the suite and the whale of a time sequins. Look how pretty and cute these are. I love them, but look at this. They're little, let me put it in here. They're little shells. These pink ones are little shells. Is that even in the camera? Oh, I've got low power mode coming on my phone. Yikes. All right, so I got a few more minutes. So it's gonna include those three products and then all the cardstock and instructions, obviously. So you're gonna cut your paper that you get to make the cards. So, and I'm just gonna show you a couple of them. I'm not gonna show you all of them. Uh, so this one, I love this paper and we're using the sequins on just about everything punch out that little whale guy. Uh, this one, we're doing a, a bridge fold, fold card. I love those, that's something different. Uh, this one, this is actually the last card because as you go through and make your cards, you have little, you have strips of leftover bits. And so the last card is using some of those. Um, and then let's show this one. So this guy, I love this turtle background, um, but then I stamp these and I don't know if you can tell, but so it's lighter up here and darker there. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the video. Um, so the way I'm doing my classes now is I'm not doing them on Facebook. I'm not doing lives. I am doing them videos and then I just make it like unlisted and you get the video and a PDF. And the PDF has all your cardstock measurements and step-by-step -step instructions for making the cards. Because some people want to read, some people want to watch a video. So this hits you both ways. Um, but I'm not doing a live because then that ties us all down to a certain time. 
and I don't want to have to do that. So I want you to be able to do it, make the class, make your stuff whenever you want. So that's that. I'm going to be posting that, the class. I'm going to create an event on my Facebook doing that Saturday. And I will also post it on my blog. So as always, if you have any questions, email me. Um, next week is going to be, uh, the start of August. So next week will be my August workshop and I'll have, uh, different stuff for that. And it'll be like end of summer kind of theme. So, okay. Enjoy your weekend and thanks for being here. Bye. Oh, if this is going to let me finish. Oh, I close.